Good morning here from Phnom Penh. My name is Patri Derek Pan, the founder of Comarican. Uh, today uh, we have a special uh, interview with recently crowned Miss Cambodia 2016 of Georgia, Miss Bella Toscano. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Hey, how are you? I'm doing well. Just just woke up. You're lucky. You're, you're all probably winding down tonight, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's what, what, over here. Where are you I'm based? sorry. Where are you based? Oh, I'm based out of Atlanta, Georgia. So I'm in Atlanta right now. Um, <laughs> getting ready to head to bed soonish after this <laughs> for well, early morning. Thank you for taking uh, you know, this request uh, to be interviewed at a very impromptu manner. You were recently crowned less than 24 40 hours ago right how how's how how are you feeling from from this weekend's ac activities so at first i was just completely shocked that sounds so cliche but i was kind of like what <laughs> but now that it's kind of settled in i'm really excited and i'm really um kind of also maybe a little bit nervous to um be representing the community in such a way but again i'm very excited to kind of um use the title to be able to create more of an uh, you know of a presence in the asian american community that community that's the whole reason kind of why i sought out um the cambodian association in the first place yeah. was because um, you know i just kind of wanted to grow help grow the asian american presence here in atlanta Thanks. so hopefully the title will help <laughs> for those watching us right now please do us a, a kind favor there's a there's some social media plugin tools on the left side. Click, share, click, tweet. We want to get more people uh, to join us for this conversation. Um, this interview will probably be around 40, 45 minutes, depending on how how much energy our subject has. Um, but uh, this is our this is my last one for a while. Um, but uh, and also wanted to give uh, some house rules for those who are new to the Blab service. Uh, if you have questions for Bella, feel free to drop them on the right side box here on the screen. Uh, you can add, use the at sign and our moniker and uh, the questions will be uh, highlighted. Uh, we'll be taking questions throughout the whole session. But, uh, and also if you notice, Bella, if you notice like on my box and your box, it, uh, there's a two hands going like this. You see that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, if people like what you they see or hear, then they can click it and uh, you know support uh, uh, support you. Uh, but that's how another way that people can interact with, with us. You know, I can't do it to myself, but I can do it for you. And if we and maybe later, yeah, you can do it for who's on, who's on the video. You can't do it for yourself. And then uh, one last thing, one last thing is that we want to make this um, inter, uh, in, interview as interactive as possible. So. A little bit later into our live stream, we will open up the third seat and maybe the fourth seat because you have up to four seats for people to uh, to come in and say hi and leave comments and, and ask questions, etc. Yeah. So um, that being said, let's resume our, our, our conversation. So, uh, how did you get about in uh, uh, the interview? Or not the interview. The, um, the pageant. Like, did you find out about yourself, or like did someone nudge you? Did Morgan sort of Buy you drinks and how did I find out yeah. about the pageant. Yeah, how did, you, yeah, so, how did you go in the process? Yeah, so actually, last year in 2015, I kind of started searching for, um, you know, something, some way to get involved in the Cambodian community here in Atlanta, and even if there was one at all. And I ended up, um, you know, stumbling onto their website, and then I found a link to the pageant. I found a little flyer for last year's pageant, yeah. and I, I actually emailed. Um, it must have been Bonkanita and asked her, you know, how I could get involved, if it was too late. And then I never heard back from her. Oh, <laughs> so, right now, call know. her out. She's watching right now. Call <laughs> her out. <laughs> I never heard back from her. And so I just kind of thought, oh, maybe maybe they just don't do anything, you know. And so, like I said, I didn't really hear anything for some time. And then this year, she, she reached out. And she was like, hey, last year you reached out. You know, it was too late by then. But, um, and like I said, I think the, the pageant had already passed by the time I reached out. Um, and she asked me if I wanted to apply this year. And so I did, um, 
I oh she says it wasn't until about junior. Uh, <laughs> it's okay, Mama. <laughs> um, but yeah, she reached out this year, and I went to you know at first I was a little unsure. I was like, I, I don't, I'm not beauty pageant material. <laughs> um, but I, I showed up anyway because, like I said, I wanted to get involved in the community. Um, and so I showed up to the first practice or pre practices, I guess. And I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. So I put in my application. Um, and then I started telling my cousins and my sister about it. My sister actually joined too. And so, yeah, that's how I ended up kind of stumbling into it. <laughs> what was your relationship with your, uh, with the Cambodian community in that area and the estate prior to your involvement with, um, with the pageant? Um, well, I mean, you know, to be honest, I, like I said, I didn't even, um, you know, I didn't know that there was that big of a community there. And that's the whole reason why I reached out in the first place was because if there was one, I wanted to become involved in it. And so, um, you know, I wasn't, yeah, you know, I guess I have to say I wasn't really involved until I joined the pageant. I see. I see. You're, you're biracial, correct? Yes. Yeah. I'm and half Italian. And a half Italian. Um, so is your mom's, is, I'm guessing your mom's side is, uh, that's, that's part of my. Yes. Yeah. My mom's side is part of my, she came over, um, she was a, her, her sister and her grandmother were refugees. Um, so they were sponsored to come over. Um, I want to say by maybe it's some type of religious organization or, um, something along those lines, but they were sponsored to come over from Thailand because they had escaped Cambodia found refugee in Thailand and then from there were sponsored to come to the US. I see. Did your did your mom meet your dad here in the US then? How did they or they met Yeah, they met in Connecticut. Oh, <laughs> they met in Connecticut. Um that's I guess you know that whole area was kind of where all the immigrants were coming in. <laughs> yeah, there's a pretty so, sizable Cambodian yeah. population there in uh Bridgeport, Hartford, uh mm -hmm. that was the other one, Watertown Middlebury, there's there's actually a sizable Cambodian community in the state of Connecticut. So I'm not surprised that. Yeah. Is that where you were born too? Uh, Connecticut? Yes, that's where I was born. I was born in Bridgeport, Connecticut. There you go. Um, and yeah, I lived there up until I was maybe five, and then we moved down to Georgia, Jonesboro, Georgia. I see. I see. For those that have are watching us right now, please, if you have questions, leave it on the side. We'll we'll be monitoring and looking over at uh, at at all times. So. Um, feel free to drop questions for, for Bella. Um, so, uh, but growing up biracial, uh, biracially, um, what was your, inner, what was your knowledge of the Cambodian culture and the history, um, from, from, I guess, from, from your mother's or from relatives, your client relatives, yeah. what, what was your, so, what was your knowledge of, of Cambodia? Yeah, well, growing up when I was much younger, I, um, I mean, you know, it's nothing I really ever even thought to ask. And this is like when I was much younger um, and it was nothing really that was ever talked about. And then it wasn't even something that I started to think about until I started reaching my, um, I guess, adulthood. <laughs> you know, when I when I got in, around the time I got into college, I started thinking, like, where is my mom from? You know, like, why is she over here? And it was probably around that time when I was 18, I started asking her questions and I started learning more and more. And then I became more and more interested because it was just something she never really talked about um, or even my aunt and that whole you know side of the family it's not really anything I guess that was a table topic <laughs> so um, yeah like I said I started to become very interested in um, how they got over here and um, you know just their whole story their whole background around that age I see. 18 and I've been very interested ever since so it's from 18 to your current age now you're 23 correct I'm 23 now. Yes. So for the last five years, and you you've been it's, it's safe to say that you've gone through this discovery, rediscovery of your roots, your mom's side, um, in sort of an accelerated uh, way, right? Because of your growing yeah. interest and curiosity about how how your mom got here, correct? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I would say I, I I grew up almost predominantly in an Italian family, just because I was around them so much. You know, I was hardly ever around my mother's side, even, um, I mean, just cause they moved down to Georgia, um, before we did. And so, like I said, I was more exposed to the Italian side of my family and I, 
for most of my life, I identified mostly as Italian, even though I knew I was part Khmer. And I think it's just what anyone does, you know, being biracial, you kind of, you go back and forth between the two. You're like, well, maybe I'm more Asian. And now, now I kind of want to identify with being more Italian or whatever other, you know, race you are. And so, like I said, growing up, I mostly identified with being Italian just because I was in that setting right. more so. And that's another reason why I, um, you know, now as I've kind of discovered my mother's um, culture, it's even more so interesting just because it was never something that was really talked about too much. Mm -hmm. Is there any overlapping? Is there anything that you see that's like common between Italian and Cambodian culture now that you've sort of uh, heads on with like learning about your mom's roots and mom heritage? Have you found any overlapping? I'm curious personally because I, I have a lot of uh, biracial nieces and nephews and I'm always like yeah. begging them, my nieces and nephews, like, oh, do you, do you see anything different or similar that? Um, hmm. Definitely a lot of differences. Um, you know, it's funny, I'm actually going through an interracial class in college right now. And so I've had to think about it even more, like being biracial and all of the differences between both sides of my family. And then I, it's funny, I've actually, I guess I've never really thought about the similarities. Um, awesome. I would definitely say both, both sides have, what's the word I'm trying to think about? I guess just beliefs that they stand by very strongly <laughs> yeah. that's for sure so i guess a lot of pride in their um you know in their cultures and their heritage but i don't know i would have to say they're more so different than they are similar <laughs> have you been to yeah. other countries back have you been to italy and cambodia yet no i have not uh, growing up you know we didn't we never really had the means for us to travel that way. And then um, since starting college, I always wanted to, but um, I've been able to save up some money. Mm -hmm. And so upon graduation in uh, May of 2017, I'm sorry, um, I plan to go straight to Cambodia and um, stay there for maybe a month, travel around to maybe some of the other Southeast Asian countries, Thailand, Vietnam, <laughs> um, and whatnot. And my plan is to stay there for maybe two to three months and then end up in Sicily where my Italian family is from. So from Asia to Italy, just kind of end and there <laughs> and meet some of the family that I have there as well. That's, that's, that's great. Um, we look forward to uh, following your progress and uh, maybe doing a follow-up mm -hmm. interview um, at that time. Um, yeah, that'd be great. And I really hope to learn a lot, especially, I mean, I, I don't know what it is just more so, um, I'm really, really wanting to learn a lot more about the Khmer culture and my mother's heritage and whatnot, um, more so than the Italian. And again, I think it's because I felt like I grew up more so Italian. Right. But yeah. <laughs> uh, let's take a question from Rondarp Tech. Uh, I see a question there. All right, let's, let's see if you can answer that real quick. Uh, where's it? Where's it? Uh, do you think you will have any work done? I'm not saying you need it, just asking. Uh, Any work? Uh, I'm not sure what he's referring to, but um, I think it may be related to your pageantry work. Uh, like, what what are you expected to be doing? Oh, in term? Any work done on my lips? No. <laughs> I've never really thought about having any work done. Um, I don't really feel the need to. <laughs> um, but... Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. No. Plastic surgery. Come on, guys. But um. Yeah. No. I didn't see that. My apologies. Uh, oh no, it's okay. <laughs> uh, to me. I also want to yeah. quickly comment about uh about Monica. Monica said that, that people are having issues with viewing, so I just want to address that real quick. Uh, for those like if your friends are trying to get access to Bella and our viewers, um. I know some browsers will not be accessible, right? So don't use um, don't use Safari, and the rest will be fine. Uh, and make sure that you allow access to like there's, there's a block there's a plugin that you need to access. Yeah, that sounds good. I can hear my echo now for some reason, though. For me? 
No, I hear my echo now. Yeah, I hear yours. You you hear now? A little bit, but not too much. It was never there before. Never there before right? okay. Graduate in May is when you anticipate in going to uh, the region. Yeah, May of two seventeen. Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. So what are you what are you uh what are you, what are you currently doing now? Uh you you have college students. What college yeah. are you? What college are you in? Columbus State University and I'm studying communication and civic leadership. Um, which is perfect because um, you know, I've just I wanna say recently, but I guess for about the past two years now I've known that whatever I do, I know I want to work. Uh, I you know, I wanna have community involvement and um as of recent, I've discovered that, you know, not even just with the Cambodian Association, there's a large Asian American community here in Atlanta. Um, and so I've been making connections that way, um, you know, just kind of reaching out to all the Asian American organizations and trying to connect with all of them, trying to figure out how I can become a part of building the presence, as I was saying earlier, here in Atlanta. And so that's really kind of what I'm working towards now. I see. I also, I also been following your, been following your Twitter. Your Twitter. Uh, Information and uh, aren't you? Aren't what other affiliations are you holding right now? What other positions? Like, yeah, like affiliation. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, so I, I do I, a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm also very interested in travel, you know, for fun as well. So I'm an intern for um, a a travel company, a travel startup here in Atlanta called Fair Trotter, and I I took that internship to kind of learn more about um, marketing and travel and how those two come together. I know, you know, whatever I do, I really want to be um, involved either in, I think public relations or marketing. And yeah. um, so, yeah. you know, that's helping me in that way. And then of course, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out how to mix my passion for the community <laughs> with my, um, you know, my passion for travel and then how I can use my skill sets, which are more so in public relations and marketing you know, how to combine all of those things. So that's why it seems that I'm doing a lot because I am just trying to, like I said, kind of trying to dip my toes into everything here and there, trying to figure out what my niche is. I see. I see. Well, that, your 20th well, is when you, uh, you, uh, you, you actually you actually ex yourself up to yourself up to opportunities and opportunities and, and basically uh, and basically uh, this much uh, experience. This much, uh, experience. I know how that can be. Mm -hmm. I know how that can be. Mm -hmm. I can still hear my echo. Exactly. I can still hear my echo. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Don't know why. Yeah. Don't know why. Let's see if we have another question. Let's see if we have another question. Yeah, please leave questions, yeah, uh, leave questions uh, on the right side. If they're inappropriate, the right side, we will kick you out. I'm just giving you a disclaimer right now. Right now. Be respectful for everybody. Respectful uh, for everybody. Um, and uh, this is a family yeah, interview, so family. keep things uh, appropriate. Uh, appropriate. Um. um uh, Bong Monica asked how I was feeling as I awaited the results for the top three yeah. um, and the winner yeah. <laughs> results. Um, I was a little bit nervous, but yeah. I have to say it wasn't, um, I don't know how to explain what I was feeling. You know, I loved all the other girls that I competed with. Yeah. And one of those girls yeah. was my sister <laughs> in the top three. So I hope I loved her. No, um, like I said, I loved all the girls so much that there wasn't any kind of like resentment that I was feeling or like, you know, oh, I hope they call me is the winner. Yeah. I mean, I would have yeah. been happy. I would have been just as happy if my sister had won or, if, um, you know, the second runner up, Sinitra, had won as well. So I was a bit nervous, but I, like I said, I would have been happy for anyone who had been up there. Um, but when I did find out that I was the winner, um, at first, like I said at the beginning, I was kind of shocked, like, no way. <laughs> but um, then, you know, I became very excited, and I'm really excited to see what comes next. Did you do a lot of prepping? Did you do a lot of prepping? Prior prepping? To, uh, prior to, uh, to the pageant itself? Like, I, pageant itself. Like, I, I, I interviewed a few I, other I few in the past, but I'm always trying to understand a little bit about what, what, what did you do? Uh, in preparation uh, for preparation we had rehearsals and rehearsals I would think like that. Yeah, I mean, share us your secret how you want. Share us your secret how you want. Specifically, what did I do? Yeah, yeah. Like just, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I definitely tried to brush up on, um, you know, my knowledge of the Khmer culture. Um, certainly, <laughs> and then as well as speaking it, I didn't know too much. So, um, you know, I practiced. I practiced that a bit, um, 
mostly I, in order to prep for the pageant, um, I kind of worked on my, I guess, public speaking yeah. skills yeah. and whatnot, just because, um, you know, it's not something that I do too, too often. So the idea of being in front of all those people was really nerve wracking. And so I would um, speak, speak to friends and um, practice questions and answers with them and whatnot. Um, but then, you know, that's kind of what I did as an individual to prep. Right. And, um, right. you know, then as a whole, we all just kind of get together once a week for um, the walks. We would prep that way if that's what you were asking. Right. All right. 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 I noticed like one area, noticed, of, like, one area of, of the pageant, the sort pageant of make it or break it, or break it is the uh, the Q and A, the Q and A, and the public speaking portion. Um, and the public speaking portion. And I've noticed like a lot of women and I've noticed like a lot of have have, 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 have really crumbled have, in, that, really under crumbled those, in that, under those, the, the pressure. Yeah. Or they've done it really <laughs> smoothly they really and calmly. Smoothly. And, uh, and, and uh, they get the points that they deserve the based on the, 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 the response. So you were practicing. You, yeah, so you I were mean, practicing. I'm sorry. Say that one more time. I you didn't were hear practicing, you. Too uh, you were practicing. Uh, uh, a lot of the rehearsals uh, for the, the public speaking the Q and A portion, right? portion, right? Oh yeah. So during the rehearsals, we didn't practice those. Um, during the rehearsals, we just practiced the walks, really, and you know our posture and whatnot. As far as the Q&A go, they did give us some um, examples and some um, hints of what we would be asked. And, I mean, yeah, how we prepped for that, um, in the end, it's funny, even though I prepped, in the end I got up there and I just kind of answered what just what came out, honestly, like what I felt really honestly about, just because I didn't want it to sound forced. You know, I wanted to be candid and honest with my answers, and so... There was, Even though I prepped, there was definitely a huh? calmness in definitely your response and your demeanor your when I was watching the live stream. I'm not sure if that was I'm not sure if that was the advantage that you had the over the other. Um, but I noticed um, that you did have, but I you did that you possess did have, that calmness you in your. Possess that calmness in your. I think the judges probably yeah. saw that. I think the judges probably saw that. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, well, hopefully, <laughs> maybe that could have been it. No, I definitely did feel, you know, like I said, I thought I was going to go up there and feel very nervous when they asked the questions, but. They were questions that I was able to kind of, you know, things that I've already, I already have opinions on. And so, and I'm, things that I'm very, um, you know, I'm confident in. And so I didn't feel nervous answering, I guess, you know, that's why I was able to present it so calmly. Right. I was right. hoping, I was, I was hoping, other, I was really, really hoping, uh, the committee, uh, would, the have committee would have some really tough, controversial, Questions and I want to see how, no. uh, how the women would interact with the questions, but uh, <laughs> there were safe fun there questions. Were some. There were yeah, safe there were some, right? Yeah, there, there was, was one question. <laughs> it was what What do you have as an edge over the other contestants? That's that right. one was kind of like right. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was yeah. That was the only one that was I guess controversial, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> how would you? How would you? How would you? That question. How would you? That question. Mm. Maybe I think I would have just said, um, you know, I have a very large presence in the Asian American, well, not very large, but I am starting to build up a large presence in the Asian American community in Atlanta, and that would be my edge over the other contestants. Mm -hmm. uh, while Monica said, uh, we while Monica to said, be friendly. Friendly. yes, friendly. that was a very friendly, yes, that was a very friendly <laughs> competition. <Yeah. laughs> I didn't see any cap eyes, I didn't, I didn't see any. any Evil Eye. I Evil was eye. watching the whole yeah, live stream. <laughs> yeah, it definitely was. Like I said, I loved absolutely all of the girls. And, you know, I would have loved for any of them to have won over me. <laughs> yeah. Did you talk to Morgan? Did you talk and to did Morgan? She share you, did she share you? Oh, uh, what uh, transpired? What her experience transpired? Her experience the, experience the first uh, uh, pageant first, winner? Uh, pageant winner? Um, I have yet to speak with Morgan about that since I've won the other night. Um, I've wanted to, you know, just to kind of figure out what I need to expect. She did come by um, once or twice to some of our practices, and she kind of hinted at what might be happening, but she didn't go too much into detail. And so um, I probably should do that, reach out to her and ask, you know, what's going to transpire now. 
Right. That I miss Cambodia. Right. Have you have any communication to uh, with uh, uh, other with former other Cambodian American or current Miss Cambodian American in the U.S. Cambodian American in the U.S. Do you have any? No, I haven't. I actually just just started thinking about that today. I mean, this is the second um, pageant for Georgia. Yeah. And so I'm only thinking yeah. about Morgan. But even actually earlier today, I thought about um, you know what other Miss Cambodia U.S. pageants are out there and what other winners there are and if I should reach out yeah. and kind of speak with well, them. Kamara well, can definitely be, can definitely uh, be uh, um, a supporter uh, on that. Yeah. Supporter yeah. On that yeah. Yeah. Um, I've probably I've interviewed probably over a dozen over a dozen Miss, Miss Cambodian Miss Americans Miss in the, throughout Americans. the last decade. Oh, really? throughout yeah. the last decade. Yeah. My first one, here's yeah, a, yeah, my first one. Story. Story. Not a funny story. story. Here's a real, story. Story. Here's a true story. Here's a real, here's a true story. 2005. 2005. I had moved to Cambodia for the first time. I had time. moved to Cambodia for the first time. My first job was with my the first newspaper job. here, the English newspaper. Paper. And Miss Utah and was a Cambodian Utah American. A Cambodian and she won the big one. Uh, she, won she won her big state. One. Uh, she won her state. So she represented her state for so the she represented her state for the America pageant. America pageant. Donald Trump's pageant. Donald Trump's pageant. Mm-hmm. Donald Trump's the big pageant. The big and uh, oh. and uh, so, so her name is Obama. So her name is New York right now. New York right now. And yeah, but she represented. And, yeah, but she, she was the first ever Cambodian the American. Ever Cambodian American. Man, man, on the state level. On the state level. That represented. That represented. For the national level. For the national level. So. Oh, wow. um, so. Um, and then recently we. And then recently we. The. We, the, the yeah. Amazing young woman there. Amazing young woman there. In the DC area. And, the DC and then area. we interviewed. Um, and then we interviewed. Um, uh, Virginia uh, many times. Virginia many times. There in the. the there in the. the lower area. Lower area. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I definitely would like to reach out to some of the other um, Miss Cambodia USA um, yeah. contestants and winners yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. Definitely connect with them. Yeah. Uh, we'll, 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 yeah we'll, we'll facilitate we'll, that for you if we'll you wish. We'll facilitate that for you if you wish. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> what? Uh, what? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Young. Uh, the, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't Young. Why there's an echo? Oh, why there's an echo? On it. Sorry, I don't. Echoes on it. Sorry, I don't. Well, I'd be using my exposure to get into movies. Sorry, I was looking at that different <laughs> answer. Um, no, I haven't. That's not really anything I've thought about. My sister might, if my sister had won. <laughs> um, but no, that's not really. Huh? Your sister did win. Your sister did win. She's second runner up. Oh, she's second runner up. Yes, that is true. So maybe she could use that as exposure <laughs> to get into some movies. That would definitely be something that she might be interested in. Not so much for me. I think I would like to use the exposure more to become um, more involved in the community, as I've said several times <laughs> um, here in Atlanta. I see. You don't. You don't want to pursue. Don't, you don't want to pursue that. Uh, that, uh, that line of. Uh, I'm sorry. That line of, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. This. Ex- yeah, I'm sorry. This. Ex- I don't know why. I don't know why. I'm just saying. Do you, I'm just saying. You, you don't want to pursue. You don't want, want to pursue the industry. Industry. The movie industry. No, it's actually funny though. When I was younger, I did. <laughs> A couple of years ago, I would have said yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. So much has changed, and it just kind of became a, a dream that just flickered out and glittered away. It's not really anything that I'm interested in right now. I see. I see. I noticed, like, in I noticed, like, in, one of the questions that one of the questions that is asked uh, com- uh, is, uh, like, what issues, like, what, what issues, issues are you most passionate about? Are you most uh, about, about to take uh, a crown, a crown, that's a mission that's to shed attention, to shed attention. What what issues? Oh, what what I issues? Really that be, I didn't hear that too that well. Be, oh wow! Say that one more time. Oh, wow. What what issues are you? What what issues are you? Or am I passionate about? Um, I am very definitely, you know, interested in becoming um, more involved in the education sector and education reform. So I would say that's probably an issue I'm more passionate about, especially, you know, in terms of the underserved community and at-risk youth. Um, just because, you know, I almost kind of feel like I was a part of that community growing up. And so it's kind of something that, you know, so the struggles that they go through, um, is definitely something that I can relate to and I've always related to. And so um, over the past few years, it's become something that I'm very passionate about and have tried to um, also kind of d- dive into. I see. I see. 
and another reason I would like to go to Cambodia. Mm. Mm. You know a lot about the uh, current education system or quality here in the country? I do. Oh, here in the United States? No, in Cambodia or, yeah, in Cambodia. Cambodia. No, I don't know anything too much about Cambodia, but again, that's kind of why I would like to go over and visit and see what it is like over there and, you know, what I could do to help. Predominantly, you know, I feel like I live here in the U.S., and so it's my duty to, you know, establish a change here, but... I am, you know, as I said, um, becoming more and more interested in my mother's heritage and things that are going on over there. And so that's why I'd really like to go over there and kind of learn what's going on and how I can help. I see. I see. Let's see if you have any questions from people here. What's this event? A piece, a cake for the committee and you? <laughs> Was it easy for you? No. <laughs> that's not like a rhetorical question. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> No, the committee um, worked very, very hard to put this pageant together. They did so much to make it, um, you know, as easy as they could for us and the rest of the contest for me and the rest of the contestants, I'm sorry. Um, they worked very hard to put it together. So it definitely wasn't a piece of cake for them, <laughs> but um, they did try to make it as easy as possible for us, or as simple, not easy, but as simple to work our way through, navigate through. Mm -hmm. So Monica asks uh, if, they, if we can see the crown. Can you take your crown real quick? And it's kind of invisible right now because the because of the. Uh, well, I actually don't. I don't have my crown on me right now, but this is. Oh, how heavy is that? That looks <laughs> like uh, that looks heavy. It is heavy duty. <laughs> how many pounds is that? I tried to put, say again. How many pounds? Pounds. Like if like ten pounds? No. Really? <laughs> it's. No, I'm just kidding. But it was, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful crown. I just needed some more time to put it on. So that's why I wasn't wearing it. <laughs> but I do have it next to me. I see. So you get to keep the crown forever? I always been curious. Like, do do the women get to keep it forever or they have to pass it on to the no, 2017? That was actually my question. <laughs> I feel like I do just because... Um, <laughs> Morgan, she was wearing hers from last year, I believe. Okay. Um, when she crowned me. Yep, I get to keep it. Thank you, Ron Monica. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the sash, you get to keep that for life too, right? Yes. <laughs> sash. Nice. No, I love the sash and I love the crown. I want to so see beautiful. a cool, like, my yeah. type pattern uh, sash. That would be like a, uh, something I would uh, encourage the committee for future. Um, my color? Yeah, like you know, like the grandma print, the the Cambodian scarf. Let me see. I, I don't have a Cambodian scarf on me. You you seen the Cambodian prints on like sarong on the on sarong and on uh, oh, scarves? Yeah, right? yeah. Like, you know how the the really yeah. intricate. What's that? Yeah. I said that'd be a busy looking sash. Well, you can it's simplify. You can simplify, or it can be like just the rim, just the rim of the uh of the 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 border could be like some type of uh Khmer patterns. Really. What's that? See you too, but they spent all night making this. Yeah. <laughs> is that silk? <laughs> is that silk? Oh, it's handmade. Handmade. Uh-huh. Wow. Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> that sash was made by Mrs. So Pip Lamb. Shout outs to her for making that. She spent the whole day. Or so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. Nice. So share us uh Bella some some fun stuff that people won't get to know about you unless this interview happened. Like share some random, did you know stuff about random. me? Yeah, just what do you like to eat? What kind of music? Like just, just let's, let's change oh gosh, the stuff. This question makes me <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I said, this question makes me a little nervous. Why is that? Honestly, what I like to do for fun. I mean, I just feel like I spend so much time between school and work and trying to become, you know, Kind of a presence in the the asian american community here in atlanta <laughs> watching well, it i do do that for fun that is what i do for fun yeah um but i play the violin oh is it nearby you is it was, next to you it is but it's broken oh. i need a string you'll get another string <laughs> uh. i'm being honest no it's actually funny i thought i was actually kind of hoping that we would have to do a talent portion yes. so that way i could whip it on and play and that forced myself to relearn some things just because i haven't played in um you know a couple of couple months now 
I haven't picked it up just because I've been so busy, but <laughs> um, I play the violin. Okay. Um, what kind of music do I like to listen to? Really, this is so cliche. I feel like everyone says this, but I like anything, anything that's good, honestly. I listen to country, pop music, indie. I like it all. <laughs> J-pop. You love sound, like, you know, remember, remember in the late, I sound really old when I say this, because um, I am old. Uh, <laughs> Remember, uh, like Juvenile and uh, Hot Boys and all those rappers from ATL? Mm, no, uh, you don't remember them. See, but I was just curious because I am a big lover. I love hip hop music and rap, and and uh, I remember, I remember when I was in college, um, they were really big. Juvenile and Hot Boys, Little Wayne before he became into solo, but uh, they're all oh. from Atlanta area. Do you follow like really? southern southern rap, like you know the the dirty south rap? Rap? Yeah. No, not really. Okay, that's maybe the one genre that I really don't listen to. Too Atlanta much has of. such a great like rap uh, hip hop scene, in my opinion. No, they definitely do. I will say that. That's why it's kind of a shame that I'm not more, <laughs> not more um, into it. I really should be, just because they do have a really good scene here. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, other things I like to do for fun. Um, I love hiking. I love, you know, being outdoors. I try to find a different place to hike or I was trying to find a different place to hike every week yeah. here in Georgia um, earlier this year. And then I let school and work kind of get the best of me. <laughs> right. But um, now that it's, you know, warming up, I really want to get out and do more of that. I love traveling. I just got back from Mexico um and then i'm going to austin texas actually this weekend oh, just great. to go see that uh, kind of go around there and see what that's all about i've heard it's like a i've heard it's a better version of atl but we'll see mm -hmm. <laughs> it's definitely a very vibrant um, uh, tech scene there in uh, austin yeah. and that's something that i also really like a lot here in atlanta um what was your favorite part of the pageant and what were you most nervous about um, my favorite part of the pageant was dressing up. <laughs> that was a lot of fun, just dressing up in all of the traditional, uh, you know, kamai gowns and um, whatnot. I really loved that. How many outfits um, did you have that? the whole the whole time? How many outfits did you have to change for the from day one and day two? I yeah. noticed four. That's it. It felt like ten. I thought I saw I like different <laughs> outfits. I thought I saw like ten different outfits that you were wearing from all the photos that we've been seeing. No, Only four. no, yeah, there was, four different, there was four different outfits. I'll have to get more um, for the rest of this year, though, for some of the events that I go to. But, you know, we only had four. Mm. Um, but that was my favorite part. I love dressing up in all the traditional wear. And, um, you know, what made me the most nervous? I think I was the most nervous about, this is going to sound silly, but what I looked like walking in them. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that I was presenting myself in the right way. Yeah, you know, with from ha you know having the right stance, um, you know, walking at the right speed, <laughs> not walking too fast. Um, I I guess I was just very, you know, I wanted to look appropriate yeah. <laughs> and match the outfits right. that I was wearing. That makes sense. I would think it'd be kind of uncomfortable, especially like. Hundreds of people are like watching you. You every step. You don't want to mis make a mistake. You don't want to fall. You you want to be like you said appropriate with you know what the the outfit entails. You know, uh, so a lot of elders are in town. In some temple setting too. All these variables. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. I wanted to match what they were expecting right. of me, and so I think I was nervous about that. I was like, am I walking right? Am I saying it right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so I was nervous about that the most. Um, did, did I have my own makeup artist and stylist? I did miss, uh, miss, uh, Kunita. She did all of our hair and, or most of our hair and makeup. Um, well, no, not the hair. Sorry. She did our makeup and then Bongra did our, <laughs> our hair for us. Mm. So I guess kind of like my own makeup artist and stylist. I see. Did you get to pick the outfit yourselves? Like they, the, the committee... So I give you gave you like eight outfits, and the girls just had to pick and choose which one that fits and their preference. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the same one more the, time. The, the the outfits were they were they selected by you or by the committee? 
Oh, right. So, I wasn't curious. Um, you know, obviously the type of outfit was selected by the committee because we all had to match. But, I mean, they did allow us to pick and choose, you know, what colors we wanted to wear, if that's what you're asking, yeah. like what styles we wanted right. or not. And then we all picked our evening gowns. I see. So then you had the evening gown portion was was uh, the choice by each uh, pageant uh, members, correct? Yes. I see. Yeah. I see. yeah. And then as to the rest, you know, we all had to, like I said, we all had to match <laughs> in terms of style, so. I see. Uh, Young one M one asks when we were talking about music earlier. Um, do you have a favorite Cambodian song? Do you listen to Cambodian? Um, music? How is your Khmer? If I if I went three six right now and did a Khmer interview, would you be able to handle that? Oh, I'm sorry. Say that one more time. If I was to and hear you. The, if I was to flip the script and do a Khmer interview with you right now, how is your Khmer? Mm, you it's that? okay. Okay. <laughs> it definitely. Be better yet another reason why I want to go to Cambodia. Yeah. Um, you know, I I did have to speak Khmer at the pageant, but I it's something I could do a lot, a lot better on <laughs> in terms of my pronunciation and whatnot. I was actually uh, tweeting you on Twitter yeah. a yeah. couple months ago, I feel like saying that. <laughs> you were you were tweeting something about um, learning the language. Yes, I know I that. Like, I wanted the readers of watchers to uh, to understand what your level of the the language is. How's your Italian then? Is it at the same level as your Khmer or stronger? I probably know a little bit more Italian, mm -hmm. more so just because I grew up around uh, my grandmother and grandfather who would speak it almost all the time. So yeah. I would say pronunciation wise, like I can pick that up very easily and I can hear it very easily. Like I speak Spanish very well. Yeah. Um, and I can hear it very well just because of the, I don't know, I want to say dialect, I guess, and the way it's spoken. Um, in terms of Khmer, it's, I, I did hear that a lot too from my great grandmother, but it's not something I heard as much. So it's a little bit harder for me to pick up on it, like with certain sounds right. and whatnot. But yeah, about, I'm getting there. About, mm, I think I want to say like maybe seven to eight years ago, Montreal, which has a very vibrant and large Cambodian community, Montreal, Canada, they did a pageant, right? They did a pageant, Miss, you know, Khmer Canadian whatever the official title was. And what was really interesting about that pageant, Bella, was there was a interview portion where they were required to articulate in Khmer uh, back to everyone. And I, I'm, I'm kind of giggling and laughing myself right now because I remember how, 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 uh, how can I say it diplomatically <laughs> and nicely? <laughs> It was. It wasn't. It, it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, the 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 ladies, you know, couldn't handle it, and the one that won, if I recall, had the best. Had basically the best Khmer out of the the group. But like, out of the twelve or sixteen girls that was in the competition, um, super majority were born and raised in Canada, and so they grew up very Canadian and very French and very Canadian. So their English is just their first language. But only like one or two girls were able to like really respond back so oh really i'm sharing this because i i think uh the committee uh was kind of made it really easy for all the pageant girls to to not uh factor too much heavily on the Khmer portion because i know some pageants they they weigh heavily on on one's uh control or usage of the the Khmer language during the q a yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it was definitely, um, I don't want to say there wasn't too much expected of us. Like, there was. You know, they definitely wanted us to learn um, a good a good bit of Khmer and, um, you know, a good bit of the facts and whatnot about Cambodia. Yeah. I don't know if it was as um, as hard as what you just <laughs> yeah. talked about, but... No, it was, it, it, was a, it was pretty challenging, though, especially for someone like, you know, me, who is kind of almost just being re-exposed to a lot of this, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, they I, they all understand like the majority of the, the participants are second generation, third generation, um, you know, born and raised here. And so uh, it's very common that uh, many of the participants have very, have minimal uh, uh, language uh, training or support uh, at that, at that age. So I think, uh, you know, it's it's 
it's very understandable that they don't factor in too much. So, uh, Bella, we're at the 52nd minute mark of our interview right now. Usually around this time, what I do is um, uh, we, we, we begin to slowly wrap up uh, our conversation. Uh, we try to max it out at an hour. Uh, can you share us um, some, some, some news um, or some of the plans you have, uh, either professionally if you work or anything that you want to share with um, your t new title now as, as Miss uh, Cambodia of Georgia? Can you share us like, any upcoming news that we should be, should be following or know about? With, with 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 yourself um yeah i know that there are some upcoming events um i was actually going to reach out and make sure that i am um you know solid on everything that's coming up i know the next i believe the next event is going to be the dragon boat race atlanta has Ooh. a dragon boat race <laughs> every year and i know that we're going to be participating in that um but like I said, I know I'm going to actually have to double check and see if there's any other events coming up um, between now and then. Um, first responsibility is the AP AC Gala. All right. Well, there's a gala coming up mm -hmm. <laughs> on the 7th. So um, I don't know if that's something that you guys would like to follow. I'll probably be posting about it um, closer to the event once I learn a little bit more about what's going to be happening. Right. Um, but you asked what else I was going to be doing professionally with the title yeah, professionally with the title or just even like personally, like, you know, you shared like you're, you're, you're traveling, uh, soon you're graduating. What you said, you graduated in May. So anything that you want to, you, well, you want people to know about that's not like official or released yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, you know, like I said, with this title, I'm really hoping that I can, use it to my advantage in gaining more exposure in the Asian American community here in Atlanta and um, maybe even potentially using it to <sighs> trying to still trying to kind of figure it out in my head, maybe bring um, the Cambodian Association closer to some of the um, some of the organizations that are here in Atlanta. Um, you know, really going forward, that's kind of what I know I keep saying the same thing over and over again because I'm still trying to kind of figure it out in my head when I'm how I'm going to go about this. Um, but yeah, I mean, going forward, I'm really, really going to try to create more of a presence here in Atlanta as kind of um, an Asian American leader and trying to, um, you know, just just become more involved in the community, however I can, more so in the education sector and for the underserved communities. That's great. Um Share us uh, how can people follow your your pro your progress your work. Share us um, your social media channels that people can. Uh, um, can I'm very keep active on Twitter. Yeah, I'm very active on Twitter. You can follow me. Um, my Twitter handle is at Bella in the ATL, um, oh. and then of course you could also follow me on Instagram. I love photography, so um, I haven't posted too much lately, but I, I try to often, so you can follow my photography um, yeah. on Instagram, also at Bella and the ATL. Cool. Do you have a official fan page yet? I know some of the girls always create one after they win. Do you have... Um, yeah, I like thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought about that. I'm not sure. I wasn't sure if Morgan had created one or not. I kind of wanted to, but we'll see. <laughs> I don't think Morgan has it because, uh, yeah, I don't think she has one, to my knowledge. Uh, okay. Not a not a fan page devoted just for her her tenureship as uh, Miss Cambodia of Georgia, but you can start it. Um, yeah, create them, yeah, exactly. I can start it. <laughs> yeah. I might. Because I would imagine, might. I would imagine you're gonna get a new set, new new uh, fans, new followership based off your your time, uh, your reign as Miss Cambodia. Um, and so, yeah, so they can follow you currently. Again, it was uh, face, uh, Twitter and Instagram at Bella in the ATL, correct? Can you type that out on the Absolutely. below for us, for those watching? They can, yeah. people can still access this interview on a rerun and they can see all the comments um, uh, there. That's all archived. So for f the folks there, um, that's, that's the preferred, um, account that they can follow you okay great great do we have any last minute questions for bella before we uh excuse her um, and, Monica, what did i learn from this experience um that i can use going forward 
Um, that sounds like a pageant question. You know, definitely. <laughs> I know it is like a pageant question. <laughs> you know, um, the question is she always wanted to ask, but she just didn't do it until now, until for the interview. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, you know, I really learned, I really learned that, you know, because like I said, this is among one of my first pageants. Um, I learned that I want to say, I want to find a different word than teamwork, but, you know, me and the, the other contestants just, they were all so sweet. And we all worked, um, you know, we really worked together to kind of make the pageant, um, you know, just easy and fun for all of us. It was almost like we created a little sisterhood. And like I said, that's why when I was up there um, in the top three, I was, I just felt like I would love for my sister to win. I would love for Sinatra to win just because we all created such, um, you know, just a great bond. And I just really, I guess, learned the value in that and kind of, working it's like we all worked together towards winning rather than we were all fighting each other to win if that makes sense it does it does yeah so in the end it is it does feel like we all won yeah <coughs> sorry <coughs> uh, been also fighting a cold this last three days um any last uh yeah monica said you are all winners <laughs> all right thank you bon monica <laughs> Any uh, final words you want to say to uh, our viewers and before we wrap things up? Um, that's really it for now. If anyone would like to reach out to me, feel free. If you have any advice for me and how I can become more involved in the community, um, any tips or anything like that, please do so. If you would like for me to help out, I do have um, a large <laughs> variety of skill sets. Um, you know, if you ever want me to do any work for you, Derek, <laughs> um, I can always, I can always help out. I'm always willing to. Definitely. Definitely. Um, I always been curious, would you be open to doing like uh, photo shoots for like any modern related, um, opportunities? Have you thought about that? And you mentioned earlier, you won't do like films, you're not interested in films, but, but would you be open to no, I mean, you know, I have modeling. Um, I have been interested in, that's always kind of been something that I've done. Um, just here and there. Uh, I just did one for actually a wedding tour. <laughs> a bunch of people are asking me, if, like, did you get married? I'm like, no, no, it's just a wedding photo shoot. Um, but yeah, I do I do that sometimes on the side. Um, if you're asking in terms or in relation to the Miss Cambodia Georgia title, um, I think that's something that I need to always discuss with the CAAG right. before. Right. But uh, yeah, if they ever wanted for me to do any types of photo shoots, I would. Right. Because... Uh, I remember recently Miss California USA is a Cambodian American uh, and she was in Cambodia about two months ago and it was a very high profile visit and I was very blessed to see this and very happy to see this because the the king, his his majesty uh, Nordam Sehatmani and the queen mother mm -hmm. uh, welcomed them uh, and they were at the, the royal palace and they got an official like royal uh, visit, um, and you know she was fully crowned. And when the meeting occurred, but I'm just thinking like, if you were to be in Cambodia in May uh, of next year, you're still technically um, holding the title. Um, and I know mm -hmm. here in Cambodia, there's such a very vi there's a very vibrant sort of um, fashion and sort of entertainment scene. There's so many magazines here on related to like just youth and music and arts and culture and fashion. Personally, I can see a lot of opportunities uh, for you here in Phnom Penh. Uh, that's why I, I was curious to understand like what was your interest in photography and modeling for stateside. But I know Cam, I know Cambodia would embrace you, and uh, here at Khmer Khan, we, we would totally, we would totally um, support your efforts um, through our networks and 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 and. Uh, connections that we have here in the country. Yeah. Well, that would be great. That's really what I'm hoping for. So hopefully it works out that way when I go to visit. Definitely. So the only way then for those to reach out to you for those type of inquiries are those two channels right now uh, at the at the at Instagram and Twitter. Do you don't want to share, you don't want to put your email address at the time? Do you have a general e email? Do you have a general email for those who might want to inquire about uh, work-related opportunities? Yes. You can type that out if you want, um, or you can just blur it out right now. But um, I just typed it out. <laughs> is that Gabriella a Gabriella dot 
Yes, gabriella.b.toscano at gmail.com. Got it. I typed to Gmail. You didn't hear down there. Oh, I see. Oh, that's interesting. Great, great. Well, Bella, it's been a pleasure uh, chatting with you. Uh, thank you so much for uh, requesting, um, no, uh, for granting us permission to talk to you. I know it's been a crazy 48 hours for you. Uh, very little sleep and very little, very rest. But uh, again, we want to, on behalf of Comarica, we want to thank you um, and congratulate you once more. And we look forward to uh, following your progress. We look forward to supporting your efforts and in the work that you do and the, in the issues that you're passionate about. So, um, so thank you again uh, from, from Cambodia. And uh, we hope you keep in touch with us and we hope to continue to share the good news that's, that you're producing uh, for your community and for the issues that you stand for. Absolutely, I definitely will. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, on that note, uh, I'm gonna stop and hit pause. The interview is officially have ended.